Factors delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. I love it. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie, and more. You got everything you need. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. I mean, who doesn't want a wellness shot? What are you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel-good week of meals ready to go. Two-minute meals Fuel up fast with Factors restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Snacks, smoothies, and more. Flexible for your schedule? You know it. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. No prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Head to factormeals.com slash robs50 and use the code robs50 to get 50% off. That's code robs50, R-O-B-S-5-0 at factormeals.com slash R-O-B-S-5-0 to get 50% off. Previously on Vanderpump Rules. I'm just a bitch in these streets trying to rebrand and get a sperm donor. I'm going to throw a party because my daughter was conceived out of love. Mm -hmm. I would like to bring it in a different form so that this kid knows we were all there. I think it'd be the gentlemanly thing to do. Give her a space and sell the house. Or one of us can keep it. I put so much of my life and my money and my time into like making this like my dream home. I I never did anything to him. Have you heard from Raquel? I haven't heard from her in a few weeks. I just want to see her. I'm still very much in love with Raquel. I spoke to her at length. It's over. Welcome to Vanderpump Robs, a podcast about Hollywood, the Valley, and everything in betwixt. I'm Rob Schulte, and with me is, of course, Molly Rosen. Hello, Molly. Hi, Rob. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you (laughs) for always being a voice of reason on this podcast. Constantly. I mean... get two in the weeds. We get two in the weeds. We try. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> it uh things are things are happening in the vpr world um i'm i'm trying to think through what to do for like a bonus series on patreon because you know we're mere weeks away from this show being this season being over who knows what will happen after that but uh i'm i'm thinking about doing some stuff where i like watch movies the cast have been in so you know how to lose a guy in ten days? He's just not that into you. Killer Eye, Halloween Haunt. Who uh, was in How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days? I think Jax is a guy at a bar in that one. Funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a good movie in its own right. So. Yeah, it's it could be it could be fun, but you know what else is fun? Hmm. I got a package full of Bic razors. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. And they asked me to do a giveaway. Since Ariana had like some spawn con with it. Yeah. And so, yeah, I did something on Instagram and I'm sending out like, I mean, they sent me a bunch. So like the people I chose who like, here's the thing. I could have gotten everyone, like everyone who entered could have won like a razor. Mm. But the thing you don't think about is like, oh yeah, I still have to pay for shipping for all of these things to go to people. So I chose like seven or eight people and I'm just like. Sending them a handful of razors that are packaged. <laughs> They're in, they have not been opened, and like wrapping them in a Vanderpump Rob's t shirt and throwing some stickers in there. So I think it'll be worth it. You're doing good work over there, Rob. Hey, razors to the people, you know, razors to the, and you know what, between you and me, hmm. uh, the local 
uh, women's shelter also won a ton of these free raisers too. Not, I, I, I just felt like it was the right. There was a lot of raisers. That's okay. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I hope I hope the company doesn't come down on me for donating some to a good cause as well. Hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> and if so, let me know. Uh, well, I'll talk all about it on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> No, so I'm looking forward to everyone. I'm happy all these people entered, and uh, it's going to be great. Did you see, though, that Luke was hanging out with Tom Sandoval at Schwartz and Sandy's during the watch party this week? Like Summer House Luke? That would be great. But no, like Kristen's boyfriend, Luke. Oh, no, I didn't see that. I just, it, I, 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 I'm speechless, obviously. But it seems odd that Kristen's ex-boyfriend, who teamed up with Ariana in the season finale last year, is now hanging out with Kristen's current boyfriend she's trying to start a family with. So, yeah. We don't. We say this all the time. We don't know everything that happens in these people's lives, and why would we? It's yeah. a TV show. But this one just feels like, are they, are they like, what? Don't we know so that we can sleep well at night? Just tell me what I don't know. I'm okay with that. <laughs> that is confusing because I didn't yeah. think that Kristen and Sandoval are friends. No. And I and Kristen was also in New York this week for Watch What Happens Live. So you would think Luke would not want to do that. But I guess there's probably some sort of obligation somewhere along yeah. the lines. Maybe he's but. friends with Schwartz. Maybe, maybe he's friends with Schwartz. And of course it's Sandoval doing like a story from his own account where he's like spinning around, look at all the people at my table. So yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Well, Molly, th these people live fantastic lives and we're just along for the ride. So maybe we should just get into today's episode. Yes, let's do it. It's season, season 11, episode 12. How do you like them apples? Bam. Uh, original air date, 4-16-2024. Frog in my throat there. Frog in the date, 2024. Uh, just when it seems the group is on the road to healing, a podcast rehashing the past sends everyone spiraling. Sheena turns her pain into lyrics by releasing a new song. Lala takes the next step towards expanding her family Allie and James have a tough conversation about the next steps in their relationship. When everyone comes together to celebrate Tom Tom's first brunch service, to celebrate everyone, Sheena and Sandoval clash over a perceived betrayal. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Tom, I've, I'm, going, I'm calling it Tom Pump. I don't care what anyone says. That's what it is now. <laughs> or Pump Tom. <laughs> Pump Tom. Tom Pump. Which one is... Which one do you think, listeners? Five star review, Apple Podcast, Tom Tom or Tom Pump or Pump Tom? Uh, <laughs> I have no dog in this fight. I just I will call it what the listeners want. <laughs> because uh, the the idea is they are joined, basically, right? Basically, all but legally, <laughs> okay. they just moved all the signage over there, and they needed a place to do brunch that wasn't Sir, I guess, mm -hmm. which still consistently has a good brunch. They are trying to like really separate Sir from this show. Yeah, I wonder why. Maybe it's because our friend Peter uh, refused to film, and he's there constantly. So they're probably just like, well, I guess we'll just make Tom Tom a storyline, but mm. just theorizing. Because Molly, it's a beautiful day in LA, 71 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, and we're at Kyle Chan's store for Sheena's Good as Gold music video shoot with the 27s. It's never leaving us this year warm, but hey, when you got a hit, you got a hit. I, yeah. We listen to Mariah Carey at Christmas. And it's... we listen to Good as Gold when Vanderpump Rules is on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and guess what? You remember you remember when Rachel Levis went on Bethany Frankel's podcast and did a three part series and told a whole lot of nothing the whole time? Well, apparently it was something to these people. I am loving that we're seeing this play out. I don't know why I didn't put two and two together in my head that they were filming at the time when this podcast <laughs> came out and seeing their live Same. reactions is incredible. It really goes to show you that the truth is somewhere in the middle. Yeah, some were not accessible to any of these people, really. <laughs> nope, not accessible to the, the people on the show, not accessible to us in the audience. I 
really am living for it. It's great. We uh, we get a lot of like perceptions, and I think what we hear from Ariana is true. You know, like I, we weren't not friends. Yeah, like we were friends, and Rachel's obviously downplaying. Like we weren't best friends, and we weren't you know as close. We were work friends or whatever. It. The lines get blurred when you're on a TV show like this. But. Yeah. And I mean, then she and Tom Sandoval would have allegedly been work friends, but they obviously were much yeah. more than that. I don't know. I'm just yeah. like, you're confused. But um, I did see on Rachel's Instagram a series of videos. Did you see these? No. They are so bizarre. They're like supposed to be fact checks and they cut between scenes from the show where people are fact checking her podcast and then scenes from the yes. Bethany Frankel podcast. And I think sometimes maybe some other footage or something. I think I did see that actually. And it's, I saw people talking about that for sure. Yes, because it didn't make any sense. All the fact checks <laughs> weren't fact checks. And also like how quick does she get advanced screeners? I doubt for it. Vanderpump rules. Maybe because that's like, why they that's were a- bad. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a good point. Like if they're trying to do it in real time as the show is airing, yeah, you're you're more focused on getting a product out than actually making a good product. I forgot also how bizarre some of the things she said were. Like the whole James <laughs> liking the sensation of Graham biting his hand, and that's why oh, Graham yeah. has a biting problem. I'm like, what is this like BDSM storyline <laughs> you're like spinning here? I it's so wild because like, you know, when a dog like nibbles or something because it is just having a fun time and you're just like, oh, that's cute. That's not like, I fucking love it when the dog bites my hand, too. I have so many questions. I also don't think a dog becomes aggressive from that. From what they've described of how, of what Graham does, which still I don't really know that much about, um, it seemed like he would get territorial and possessive at times and then could lash out and bite. I feel like from scenes we're seeing with him, it's, yeah. he's clearly not always aggressive around people. Like we've yeah, never seen that. sounds like he's a dog. Right, right. Yeah, he's not this like vicious dog that now that he's in James's hands, he's like, okay again. Like what is going on? No, it's so confusing. It's so confusing. <laughs> I'm also, I'm confused at like the exponential ramp up of the La La Sperm Party storyline. She was just in these streets wanting to find a donor. And now we get towards the end of the season. It's like, we better remember this storyline and make sure it happens. And the day before, secure a location for a party that apparently already have all the catering for. I was like, how did you get the catering without being able to tell them where they were hmm. going? Yeah. Interesting. And it can't be at your apartment for reasons. Too big a group? I don't know. Yeah, that's that's what we were thinking here. I think there's obviously the ocean of it all, too. Like, if she's in custody for, like, a month Mm. during this time for some reason, uh, that that could be it. But soon after we learn all of this, uh, we fly our way over to Burbank, where James and Allie are also talking about the podcast. Like, the whole first act of this episode is talking about the podcast. Um the one thing that I popped into my head at the, about this scene, because it's all rehashing the same stuff, is mm-hmm. that Sandoval has asked James to open for his band at the El Rey. Yes, El Rey, famous music venue. But the the thing here is like James is totally right. And I I feel like I have to say it every time. I'm not like a huge fan of James, but like I can agree with him that like you're asking me. James Kennedy, who's opened for Cascade and like regularly does huge events as a DJ to open for your cover band. Mm -hmm. How about you do a whole cover band night, then when everyone's good and drunk, you have your DJ afterwards so the evening can continue with a dance party and you can party with everyone who came to your show. Logically, that just makes more sense. I agree. But it doesn't, Tom Sandoval's got to be a headliner. Yeah. And that is it. Sandoval heads to Schwartz's apartment, 
not podcast, which I put in the notes. Sandoval does not head to Schwartz's podcast. He heads to his apartment to talk about the podcast as well. Sandoval made all of these changes to himself for Rachel. He's done so much for Rachel. And he is complaining. He's doing all this. I can't believe she's saying all of this. He also, this is in the after show too. Like he's alluding to this idea that's like, well, because we screwed up our lives, that's enough for us to give it a shot to continue with the relationship. And that's just not the way it goes. Is that sunk cost fallacy? Like, well, since we already fucked everything up, we might as well try. I don't know. It just feels gross. It's super weird. It's so kind of pathetic watching him cry. <laughs> it's just the way that he makes himself the victim in every situation Everything. is always incredible. Yeah. And it's in, it's incredible to be trying to self-produce that much and also becoming the victim in yeah. every scene. Yeah. I don't know how he just keeps saying worse and worse stuff. <laughs> it's so At this point, bad. I'm like, this is hilarious. And we haven't even gotten to the knife scene yet. Where you're just like, what are you doing? Yeah. But I think it's it's very clear that Schwartz is done talking about this in every way, shape, or form. He's so checked out. Well, I think he has a better... Uh, he's able to perceive how what Sandoval is saying is going to come across. And mm. so he's. you can see him in real time being like, dude, what are you saying? What are you saying? And you can see it in so many scenes and he just is kind of blank. Yeah. He's like, okay, I'll be the person you're just talking at, but I'm not here to give... I think it's just like, we're ready to move on, and she's ready to like put a period at the end of the sentence, and you still want it to be about you, and if you haven't learned that no one wants to hear your opinion on this, then I can't help you, brother. Yeah. Uh, so we do make it over to Tom Pump. Tom Pump. We're introduced to a novel idea of brunch. Brunch. People love brunch. I guess Tom Tom didn't open before 4 p.m. or something leading mm. up to this. Schwartz warns Lisa that he's worried about Sandoval after the podcast. And I loved Lisa's response of, who cares? Why are you listening to this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, and he's late. As we know, Sandoval loves to be late. He, but don't worry, he brought one ninja blender of strawberries yeah so thank god thank goodness He's, he showed up you know it, what would we have done without him uh sandoval comes in and i mean he's totally got this eeyore vibe going on it's that sort of thing where like all attention you think is good attention i think kids have a problem with this a lot where mm. I'm not getting the attention I want for being positive, so I'll act negative, and then I get attention. And what I really want is attention. So mm -hmm. when Lisa asks him, like, why are you listening to these things? It's not going to change anything. And I want to hear what people are saying about me, is his answer. Yeah. I think it's because he knows he's going to be exposed for all of his bullshit, and he wants to try and get ahead of it or something. Mm. Like, he... Like, he's going to get called out on the things that he is lying about, and this way he can, like, craft a story around it. Yeah, totally. I mean, to be fair, I think if I were him, I would probably also want to listen. Like, I hear what Lisa's saying, for your mental health, don't listen, don't move on. That's probably the right thing to do, just like you shouldn't read the yeah. comments. But, like, who's good at not reading the comments, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> you want to know what people are saying. Yeah. Um, and with this podcast it was like a pretty a pretty big deal i could see wanting to listen to this but maybe not everything else that people have to say about it maybe maybe move on when you realize okay she's gone on bethany's podcast and people already feel a type of way about bethany what are you gonna do you yeah know? for but real it is it is tough I don't think he helped himself at all by responding the way he did to the podcast. Let's just say I understand wanting to listen. And if he was trying to get ahead of it, he didn't succeed because everything he said was just even more cringy, if possible. <laughs> that is the truth. He is. 
He's working something, and I don't know if I like it at all. Especially now that we find out that Tom wants to sell the house. This is so not surprising and also so annoying. I'm so annoyed on Ariana's behalf. Same. Same! He's like, well, you know, it took her so long to respond to my email that, you know, my situation's changed. So let me get this straight. Your situation changed. So is that financial situation? Or was it from the very beginning you were lying to yourself or to everyone else that you were not able to buy her out and you were hoping that maybe you could lowball her in some weird world? But he can't see more than five feet in front of his face. He just can't perceive anything. Totally. And she called it. She was right. This was not a serious offer. He was just posturing. He couldn't afford to buy her out. And she said he hasn't thought through this. And the thing that she didn't say later when he was like, she took so long that that's why I couldn't do it. How much do you think she spent on lawyers fees and stuff Mm -hmm. actually putting forward what would be a reasonable counter proposal? So either he thought he was going to lowball her and just be able to stay in the house and she'd be able to leave with a backpack or he wasn't going to be able to afford the real thing. Like, it's just, he's so <laughs> stupid. I can't. And it, it's wild because it, it also shows like, you know, they're not going to get us into the details, but I had talked about it a little bit ago with Kate. The stuff in the house can't be part of the sale of the house, I think, in this situation legally, but it could be part of her crafted email. If you want me to move out and you want to buy the house for me, the house costs X. And then if you want these furniture items, that's an additional Y. Yep. And I think just everything being seen in front of his face, it's like, shit, well, if she takes every piece of furniture in the house, then I'm, I have to redo everything. He, he, can't, he can't fathom all of the ins and outs. He just wants it to be his way. It's no. Wild. And the thing is, there is such a thing as an amicable breakup, you know, an amicable separation. And then sometimes things do look differently because sometimes people are like, you know, just want to move on, going to leave you the furniture, whatever, whatever is easier. But he guaranteed that this would not be amicable. Yep. He even had multiple chances to maybe not make it as amicable as it could have been by just breaking up with her, but by like lessening the blow. But he wants to be combative every step of the way. Yeah. Lala shows up at Tom Pump and (laughs) this kind of leads into what you were suggesting earlier with, you know, that we've already ordered the mac and cheese and the Vanderpump Rosé, but you don't have a place. So she asks Lisa if it can be at Villa Rosa. Uh, And and Lisa is a bit more she does that condescending thing which is weird yeah. about like just yeah just let her have the baby the way she wants to have a baby but but i think it's all this just scene setting so that she can say yes but the interesting thing is lala starts getting into tears when she's like lisa allow me to be excited about this and we already know what's going to happen at lisa's house yeah. so it does make me question when people can turn, like, are those tears like Sandoval's tears when he's talking to Schwartz? You right. Know? Uh, I have many questions throughout this entire show about how much people cry. I think that people who are dramatic make better reality TV. <laughs> so it might just be that people are, who are good at reality TV can Fair. just, like, cry on a dime. Yeah. Um, that's always been my assumption is that these are just very emotional people. Yeah. I don't. I don't think they're good enough actors no we've seen tom in the rive and destiny he's not (laughs) yeah a great actor i think when tom's crying he's just literally wallowing in so much self-pity that he cries yeah and i think that he was a kid who cried for parental attention and this is like just the thing that's worked for him Mm. and you know what folks we all cry we all have bad days nothing wrong with crying Nothing is wrong with crying. But people who cry for... who People who don't attempt to cry and force a cry can spot a forced cry, I mm. think. Mm. That's what it is. That's what it is. 
But let's let's have a good cry and take a quick break. Yeah. Molly, we're back. We're back from break. Hi, Rob. <laughs> and I just don't understand. I've done everything for the listeners, and they just don't they don't subscribe to the Patreon. That sucks, man. Going. That really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at Ariana and Sandoval's shared living quarters, Sheena and Brock come to help clean the house. This is what friends do. I think this is a true friendship moment. I think everything else someone wants to say about Sheena, they, they, there's a lot of valid things and weird stuff Sheena has done this season. But you, And you could speculate ulterior motives, but the actions of Sheena and Brock in this scene, I think, are good friend actions i would love someone to come clean up my house i like that she was like sandoval and ariana always haven't been the nudists and i was like yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) like let's not forget that we've seen their living spaces throughout this entire show and it's always been less than ideal that's why they go to the golden nugget it makes them feel right at home uh (laughs) but i do think the idea is when you can see a a friend who's less than eager to like just clean up after themselves. You're like, Hey, well maybe we just make it a positive experience. Yeah. Uh, this is where we learn that, uh, Sheena's new song apples, because of course let's not mistake. It was good as gold at the beginning of this, not apples. Like, I think there's this like blurred line where they just kind of want to be like, Sheena's a musician. Yeah. But apples, I, I love the mental gymnastics that Sheena's doing here, that the song was originally only about Rachel and that they just recently decided to extend it and just had to add a longer verse. And so the lyrics were just about Tom at that point. That is some rationalizing if I've ever heard it before. You think that to is, make it so that Tom can't be as mad? Yes, I think that... Like it, the intention was always to just write a song about the affair yeah. and profit off that and have fun. I'm all for Sheena's like hobbies and stuff, but like, let's not get it twisted here. This song was written for the fans, yeah, <laughs> not for anything else. And that lyric was probably written at one point. You know, the story has become what it is. I need to find a reason to explain this to Tom. But great line. About the Jetta? Yes. <laughs> A really good line, honestly. <laughs> keep do- it. When you have a good line, you keep it. Oh, yeah. You know, why are we censoring for Tom Sandoval? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why Parent- we even need to rationalize this. Parental advisory, Tom Sandoval lyrics. I guess out of all of this, I'm just like, the thing I'm the least offended by is Sheena writing a song about yeah. the affair. <laughs> like, yeah. But fine. if Tom Sandoval can find something... To hook his claws into and be petulant about. He will do it. He shall Um, do it. We do hear from Ariana that part of her rationalization for not unpacking is that she's going to move anyway. So when boxes arrive, she just leaves them stacked. And then she'll just put them in a moving truck. Which is actually not the worst plan. Fair. I think that works for the stuff they're ordering from J. Crew and whatnot. Maybe not the Christmas present that's been sitting on the table no. for 11 no. months. The house is generally distressing. Yes. Uh, Tom, though, just a messy, messy dude. I think oh my that gosh. has been very clear since the beginning. If this is for real, how it looks because Anne's gone and that's how much <laughs> cleaning Anne was doing, that's horrifying. I want to know what the hell Craig's doing if the house is so messy. Not cleaning. Craig, Craig, come on. Take that push broom off your upper lip and put it onto a wooden stick and clean this house. But also maybe it was never Anne's job to begin with. And maybe Craig's now like, oh, uh, actually, Tom, you hired me to do X, Y, and Z. Anne just got the like, and and please also do this. And the the job creep, that's what they call it. The job creep. Thank goodness she's out of there. Yeah. And we care about you and mm-hmm. we're thankful you're out of there and good luck with your future endeavors, potentially with Katie Maloney. Mm-hmm. Right. So we do move on to a scene 
at Tom Sandoval and the most extras practice space where Tom is wearing a dipped out shirt. Do you know about this song that they're singing? No. The song they're singing is called Superstars, and it is a Tom Sandoval and the Most Extras original. Now, A, Tom needs to bring it down an octave or two, I think. I don't think that's his register. Mm. He's, it's not terrible, but I don't think that's a comfortable spot for him to be singing, and we see the backup dancer give a little bit of a hairy eyebrow to him when he's singing as well in this scene. But I pulled up uh, this song on Genius.com, formerly known as Mm RapGenius.com, and there's no uh, citations about what the lyrics mean, but I did... Oh, there is one citation. This must be new. I just wanted to like read one of the verses and see what our thoughts into his psyche of songwriting is, but now we'll just read verse two. We're the ones out in the cold, all your riches out on loan, end the dollar for Bitcoin guys, loaner friends should now subsidize, you serve the TV, now turn it on, oh my God, turn comments off, minutes shown, but I filmed for hours, image served, as you are, by evolution's power. Now that's the cited lyric, the minutes shown, but I filmed for hours, image served by evolution's power. Evolution, of course, production company of Vanderpump Rules. So Molly, the only citation here is just letting people know about Vanderpump Rules and (laughs) evolution and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Tom has no depth. He has no depth on this show (laughs) and he has no depth in his lyric writing. And that's... Like, I would hope, I I wanted to be like, hey, I don't like you, but maybe you are like a lyricist that can like write poetry. But no, it's, there's nothing. Literally what on earth? I mean, there's a lot of assholes who write great songs, you know? Yes. Like, this can coexist. It can be like, oh, this is your outlet where you really are expressive. But Mm -hmm. those lyrics are like, what is happening the pre-chorus and chorus, just real quick. Um, we don't want to sit and wait for fun. Cinematic Hollywood is done. Never again, never again. Been so high. And then chorus, never again, never again. It been so high, never again. I get so high, but superstars fly. What the fuck? There's I don't know. some bland choruses out there too, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I prefer a chorus that's just like, yeah sung yes. different ways yes. <laughs> over this <laughs> shake it like a polaroid picture okay literally <laughs> come on uh so you want to talk about this james sequence james is there forcing himself to dance during the practice he was politely bopping his head yes appreciated he's there with little graham Kraka slash hippie <laughs> And they go to talk, and Rachel's podcast episode comes up. Sandoval cannot help ranting. He says Rachel used him. He cared way more. He cared way more about her than she cared about him. That's become evident, he says. And James is sitting there listening to Tom. The thing I appreciate about James is he just always has no filter. So whatever he's thinking, yeah. he's just going to say it. Um, and he says what he thinks here. He's just like, basically, I do not have time for this. I, The um, kind of incredible line was where Sandoval clearly tried to get a little dig in at James mm-hmm. by being like, the reason she gave you an ultimatum to stop drinking when she thought you wouldn't be able to do it. So it would basically be an out for her to, th- for them to break up. And then literally James just shoots back. She, he's like, well, she just said on the podcast that she never loved you. So that's how much <laughs> credence we could give to her, what she says. Yeah. And also that's so rude. So rude. It's so fucking rude. Like that doesn't serve Tom's argument. It doesn't serve anything here it is just like you said a dig that he wants to get in because he thinks in his like limited head that like maybe maybe james didn't hear this part and now he'll be more on my is it no dude no it doesn't work that way no i actually thought in this scene james was very well spoken very contained 
said his thoughts and managed to not, you know, blow up. Just had an yeah. argument. James is the one telling Sandoval what we all want to tell Sandoval. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, you're a proven liar. You know, it, it, everything you say has been proven to be a lie about this. And, you know, he says the whole thing about, you know, the Ra- Raquel relationship was like a fuck fest. And it doesn't matter if you're like arguing about how much you all slept together or not. The fact of the matter is, is you did, you would go home and kiss Ariana good night and good morning, tell her you loved her while cheating on her behind your back. So whatever your feeling was about anything is like, that's who you are, Tom Sandoval. Yeah. I won't be opening up for you at the El Rey. And you can go back to playing with your little band or whatever. <laughs> yep. Yep. And then Tom tries to get in one last dig being like, go press some buttons on your computer. And James like, say it to my face. <laughs> and I like that he just laughs afterward. I think what would have been great there is if James would have been like, you're not Jax. <laughs> Jax already said that to me. That's true. That's the exact line. It was. He's like, anyone can push buttons on a laptop in Vegas. In Vegas, Jax. They need to take an order. <laughs> Get them another Cosmopolitan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's take another break and we'll be right back. Molly, we're at Villa Rosa. The tables are filled with the mac and cheese and Vanderpump Rosé. I mean, the spread looks great. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Looks um, delish. I want some. I want to eat all of it. Yeah. Yes. I want mac and cheese more than anything else right now. I think. Wow. But wow. Lala's prepping for pin the sperm on the vagina. This is fun. This is a fun little moment. I think it's a great bonding experience for everyone there. Did you notice Allie's mom was there? I didn't. Yeah. It was, Interesting. It was uh, Lala's mom, Lisa. Was Sheena's, Sheena's mom was there and then yeah. Allie's mom was on the far corner. And I had to like, they ended up saying Allie's mom in a title card, but I missed it the first time. Huh. So No, I missed it. I have to say I'm low-key obsessed with this helps pick my sperm donor idea. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's kind of fun. <laughs> yes, I kind of, I was, I was, I've been making fun of it, but I really was like, this is, this is actually more fun than I thought it was going to be. One thing I want to say about moms, though, I've recently realized moms are the contract loophole. A lot of moms have been doing interviews like Katie's mom more than anyone, mm. but I, but I don't think the moms have to like sign the same documents that the cast do. Mm -hmm. So they communicate with their kids and then they get to say all the stuff like they shot more than that. Right. They only showed a little bit. Right. Right. I wonder, I guess they're not getting paid, right? No. So they wouldn't have to sign anything. Yeah. Lisa Burningham not getting paid? No. Come on. Come on. Get that check if you're going to be on these episodes for sure. I did get one of my favorite quotes ever. But before that, I should say, I think we need to put a moratorium on the phrase baby daddy. Mm. It just feels, I think we're done. I think mm. we're done with that. I think you can, I think we can, especially coming from Lala. I think we're, I think we can t- tuck that one away. Yeah. But uh, the phrase I loved on this is when they're choosing which donor they're going to have, uh, they've got the smiley face and frowny face. Uh, but as Lala says, we're going to give it a happy face or a negative face. <laughs> happy or negative. Negative face. Yeah. Hey, happy and negative. Yeah. Just total opposites of one another. Yeah. Uh, they end up choosing a donor who's a big fan of fleet foxes. So <laughs> whatever that... Every, everyone who's dated a fleet foxes fan in the audience, if they are a sperm donor, just ask yourself... In 2011, when they were loving on some fleet foxes, is that who you'd want to be the father of your child? Just, just, and maybe the answer is yes, but I just feel like that's a healthy <laughs> experiment for the audience to go through. Do you feel like this is a red flag that was not raised at the party? I do. I do. Just because, I mean, fleet foxes make great music. Not always been my cup of Earl Grey, but. I do think there was a time in this world where 
a donor, as we should say here, that w- wanted to really let you know they were a Fleet Foxes fan. Mm. So mm. I think that's just a type of guy. Mm. Um, but hey, happy to be proven wrong. Happy that Lala's happy. She was just at Coachella partying in a way with yeah. no pants on. Mm-hmm. Which is what you do at Coachella. It's, what, it's not a judgment call. It's just what you do at Coachella. <laughs> okay. Schwartz heads to Sandoval's living space where we get one of, I would say, the wildest scenarios ever. Oh, boy. This season, <laughs> yeah. particular. Sandoval's sitting. What, Molly, why don't you describe to me what you saw when Schwartz walks in? Wait. I, no, you describe it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Molly can't bring herself to do it. And I totally understand that because <laughs> Sandoval is sitting there with his leg knife attached to to him the one he had from like season eight or something when they go to hawaii and then he's looking through some sort of periscope or something or some kaleidoscope something or other and he begins to tell schwartz that he's like getting ready to use the knife to divide up everything him and ariana own including maya like shut up like these jokes aren't even funny Say you're going to cut the Lego portrait in half, at least, right? Like, why do you have to say it about a living creature that just got out of the hospital for something that you were actively involved in? Yeah. He's not edgy. It's nothing. And that's not even the strangest thing that happens in this scene. It's really not. Sandoval proposes to Schwartz that Schwartz should move into his house and rent a bedroom for $6,000 a month. Insane. What? insane and i love that schwartz is like eating that fruit and just being like i know what's about to come dude and no the answer is no don't even say it all he just keeps saying is no everything that sandoval proposed he's like we get alone together and schwartz is like no that's such a bad idea and then later sandoval brings it up being like so we're thinking about it right <laughs> he's like no no i like that schwartz is like so first of all you're asking me to rent a room for six thousand dollars a month I'm not even getting equity. I'm not getting anything from that. Right. And now you want to say we could get a loan together so we can both buy the house? I don't want to buy a house with Tom Sandoval. I already know how that works. Like, I, I see it in real life. In <laughs> no what way. world? I it, This is a bad deal for every reason. If So Sandoval obviously benefits because he can keep the house and then Schwartz is helping pay off his mortgage. But... For that to make sense for a friend, you have to give them a good deal. Yeah. Right? Like, like if you can be like, oh, I'll give this to you for $1,000 and that helps offset my mortgage a little bit and then you're paying this cheap rent, okay, maybe. Mm-hmm. But for him maybe. to just be paying a higher rent to help Sandoval pay off his mortgage, it's like so selfish. So, so just remind me, do you know if Schwartz said what he pays for rent at his apartment in Valley Village? Sandoval said you already pay 4500 which okay. is already expensive for rent, but yes. it is more in the ballpark of what you would pay for a one bedroom in an expensive city. 6000 is a lot. And I think Schwartz might have a two bedroom, but regardless, yeah. like... So that's He's not even Val- that bad. That's like a normal amount to be paying. 6000 is a lot. That's like you're getting some kind of luxury thing. And and Schwartz probably has parking, which is insane in that area. He's probably got amenities that come with the apartment. And it's also a space that he had to move into relatively recently, right? So it's not like it's a stretch to pay a little bit extra for convenience within like a 15 month span since you had to move out of your house with your wife for context. I want to give some real context. I did not live in Valley village. I lived in an area called Eagle rock, very up and coming hip neighborhood. And we had a two bedroom apartment that was just under with parking with, you know, a pool in the, for the, for the complex, you know, And it was like just under three. So there are areas in LA that you can, you're still paying, you know, what some would consider massively expensive rent if you're in, (laughs) you know, Nebraska, but still less than what these people are paying by a lot. And it just shows you just another element of Tom Sandoval just not even living in this universe at all. 
Can you imagine also then if Schwartz meets someone who he likes and they want to like date and have a future together and he's like, oh, sorry, I have a house with my buddy and like first I'll need to sell that. And we've already seen how Sandoval is at selling his house bad. Is short sighted for sure. This is I'm so I'm so glad Schwartz just is not a pushover on this. No. Thank goodness. He has some level uh, of self preservation, you know, instinct. <laughs> uh well, we head over to James and Allie's place and Allie talks about Lala's party and says, Really the only you know, they talked about how they look, you know, their genetic traits or whatever. And she says that she only cares about the donor's sun sign and their high school GPA. High school GPA. <laughs> I can't. What? I cannot. Yeah. I don't, I get, is, I that, get is that information I mean, I, that's collected? I hope not. But <laughs> because, I mean, I was, I was like a solid 2.4. <laughs> so, but I get if you're into astrology that you would want to know someone's sign, but you also need to realize there are reasons why donor information is confidential or they don't ask at all because that yeah. could go, that could be really tricky. But she's like very frustrated about this in a moment. But the high school GPA thing was like, wh- why not? college admission scores why not what degree they have why high school gpa yeah there's a lot of things i would care more about than these two uh stats but favorite book favorite fleet foxes song come on yeah i uh but it does evolve into a bigger conversation about parenthood between the two of them ali does not have a pinterest board with rings picked out and i guess she doesn't plan on being a mother at this point in time in her life. You know, I think right. she's 27 or something at the time this was filmed. Yeah. So, I mean, that's fair. It is fair. What? I feel like the tricky thing for James is that she's not giving him the assurance that he wants right now, which is they're mm. both moving down the same path. I think he wanted to hear her say, I see a future with us and kids. And yeah. she definitely didn't say that. No, um, she sees that they have a future Mm -hmm. and that she wants to be with him but it seems to be a hard line on the kids at this point yeah yeah and even the marriage yeah at least that was kind of the she wasn't ruling it out i think she was like i'm just dating you right now and i think we should keep dating in tbd the thing is james is obviously bummed and he starts crying i'm just a little confused that it seems like they didn't talk about this before moving in together that seems to be a big problem with a lot of things on these shows like the, the Valley, which, of course, listeners, I'll be dropping an episode on this weekend on the Patreon. But there, there's a lot of things like communication stuff that I guess sometimes you learn the hard way. But you would think with all of the stuff James says about his relationship with Rachel that you would be like, yeah, you don't want to go five years in and say this person is not on the same level as me so why are you rushing so many other things it definitely also to me harkens back to the fact that many people were concerned that he moved on really quickly and like kind of Mm -hmm. seriously and it obviously they're still together obviously they you know have liked each other enough to keep dating but that is like you maybe jumped into something pretty seriously pretty quickly before you took the time to get to know someone and what they want. And I think that James is the sort of person that gets like defensive over that sort of stuff. Like, no, she's the love of my life. I love her. But there, like we always say, two things can exist at once, right? Like you could have jumped into a relationship too quickly and you can also be happy in that relationship right now. But there are factors that happen when you jump into a relationship too quickly and don't have certain conversations or are expecting a certain response without having that conversation. Right. Right. Well, I wish them the best and I wish the best brunch at Tom pump because everyone's there. 
Everyone is filming. We don't even get a, a clip from Ariana saying, oh, this is the place that I... No. We're mm-hmm. just all there having a good time. Just coexisting know? in the same yep. room. James and Sandoval apologize to each other, which is quick and easy, I guess. James is like, you know, I don't give a shit. I, this is not a thing I'm going to hold on to Yeah, in a talking head. What do you think about this food, though? It looks great. It looks great. I love that Katie and Lala are having this really serious moment, <laughs> and Ariana is just chowing down, which is really oh. a woman after my own heart. <laughs> it is. It's wonderful. I actually made a meme about it and posted it today. I mean, to be fair, I took the screenshot, and my girlfriend did absolutely everything else because she is the mastermind behind like that's a memeable moment mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and credit where credit's due hey oh yeah you know and yeah. i appreciate that i love the fish i love the skirt steak give me them french fries and you know what bring over some of that macaroni from la la's party as well yeah let's just make this a whole yeah a day of it yeah um do you find it interesting that Allie's kind of put herself in the drama i do and then like exits the drama yeah, she doesn't really take ownership of the fact. I mean, she does say she's like, that's what I remember hearing. And to be mm-hmm. fair to her, Lala did say that Katie seems very sad. And yes. the game of telephone had Allie saying that is miserable. Katie's caught up on the miserable comment, which I kind of get because like saying someone's miserable is kind of an insult. Um, yeah. And Lala's like, did you say that's what I said? Or <laughs> But it all gets somewhat resolved in that Lala admits that that's basically what she was saying, <laughs> that Katie doesn't seem happy. But I didn't happy. use that word. I yeah. didn't use that word. Yeah. And Katie is like, that's not true. I am happy. And then it comes back around to the same thing that we heard Lala express earlier in the season, that she doesn't, she had had this moment with Ariana where she's like, I can't tell if you actually like me and want to be friends with me. Here she expresses it as like, Ariana and Katie, it seems like you two have gotten so close. I don't see a role for myself. To me, I feel like this is a convenient thing to fall back on because it's just like, oh, I feel left out. And then everyone feels bad and they're all like, oh, we'll make an effort. It doesn't make sense to me actually in this at all because you could say on the same vein that Lala and Sheena have gotten super close just like Katie yeah. and Ariana have gotten super close. And maybe there's just a shifting in the friendships. And also, as Katie points out, she's like, I have nothing but time. Text me. Call me. Let's yeah. meet up. Like, you are the one with a kid who's busy. I have so much time that I will put on full makeup before texting someone I'm too sick to come to their music video shoot. <laughs> Yes. You know, nothing ever makes sense to me. It's a broken branch in the family tree of Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. And I'm not a huge Katie fan, but I love her quote here of, she wants a friendship, not an obligation. Yeah. And that is so true, especially within this group of people. Yeah. Like when Sheena chimes in, she's like, well, what I know from being Lala's friendship a friend is that she needs someone to check in and be like, no, what I need in a friendship is if someone wants something, they say it. And if they are waiting for me to read their mind, that doesn't feel like a friendship. Right. Right. No, I agree. I agree. Um, I do feel like with all of this, it's clear there is a rift developing in Katie and Lala's friendship. I think it will continue to develop in my opinion Lala mm-hmm. has changed her opinion of Katie. Some kind of like fundamentally. It seems like yeah. Lala's not on the Katie train anymore. Katie senses it. She keeps kind of calling her out for it. Lala keeps kind of denying it. But that's what I see happening. No, I totally agree. And in classic Vanderpump Rules fashion, the title of this week's episode has to do with about the last two minutes Of the episode. We got it. She talked about apples Mm -hmm. at Ariana's place, but James plays the song to five people dancing, or at least that's what the episode leads us to believe. And Sheena comes over to talk to Schwartz and Sandoval about the lyrics. You know, you went from a Ferrari to a Jetta. They're open to interpretation. But Schwartz says, yes, unless you know that Rachel drove a VW Jetta. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So good. Sandoval is very offended. And that people keep pink suit. 
Yes, he leaves in a tantrum and says, keep cashing in on my misery. Oh, you had to had to get that line in there, huh, Tom? Dramatic. He should save that one for his next um, hit. Yes, Superstars 2, uh, cashing in. Well, Molly, more to come, but only... Apparently it's confirmed, May 7th, season finale. And I guess there's going to be a three-part reunion again. You can't do less than three parts these days. They are doing three parts all over the place, and some of these reunions do not deserve them. Not at all. Uh, but I'm ready for this season to be wrapped up. I'm, I, another rumor is apparently during the finale, or like, the entire casts watch the finale at the same time together. So they won't have seen it until the reunion, which is fantastic because if we get that Sheena watching Rachel while eating sun chips situation, but it's just like a little picture in picture of the cast while the finale's up, that's going to be wonderful television, Mm -hmm. I think. But I don't know how they would do that with the reunion not coming until for a week later. Hmm. But we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Should we play some pump teenies and pastas? Yes. Listeners, if this is your first episode, of course, I want to let you know that a pump teeny is a thing we think skewed more positive on the episode, and a pasta is something we think skewed more negative. It can be a concept, an abstract idea, or a downright person's actions, or a human being in general. Uh, would you like to go first, Molly? I would be happy to. Uh, my pasta is Sandoval's inability to open up the Zillow.com and find mm-hmm. himself a new apartment or house. Yes. Do you have a pumptini? I do. I think that my pumptini might surprise you and maybe everyone. Oh. I've, wow. I've t- done a 180 on watching Sandoval be himself in all of this. I think this was my pasta, but it is now my pumptini. Because I've decided this is a fascinating anthropological experiment. Like watching him with his cover band, his level of delusion. I'm like, this is uh, an experiment about like what happens when you take a man with very little self-awareness and put him on TV for 10 years. That is incredible. I love that. Thank you. I mean, thank you, Vanderpump. (laughs) Evolution. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Lisa, for providing your namesake to this. <laughs> no, that is wonderful. I think my pumptini is going to be a little bit meta as well. Mm. I think it's reading those lyrics to Superstar for the first time on today's episode. Because just like yours, it like opens up so many more portals of thought for that man. And my pasta, I hate to give it to him, but it's another Tom Sandoval, and it is the... Pirate Sandoval sitting in his wicker chair in the living room with that knife. What is going to happen to this person? You yeah. know, they, they are not living a good life. That's, huh, I don't like it. But we're living our best lives possible by doing this podcast. And I encourage listeners that if you'd like to see it go on to show some support at Vanderpump Rob's Premium, which you can click the link to in the bottom. It's patreon.com slash Vanderpump Rob's. Molly. Thanks again. I really, really look forward to it. And I look forward to the next time we get to hang out, which I'm sure will be right around the corner. Totally agree. All right. Well, I'll see you soon. Bye, Rob. Wait, Rob? Is that who we're talking about? Yeah.